Last week I built old Betsy, the £100 used PC, to see how good or bad the experience would be for budget buyers and our overinflated economy. If you missed that video, it's coming up in the top right. After building this budget PC, it was time to run Cinebench and find out what this was capable of at 2.4GHz stock settings and make sure the processor wasn't getting too hot. The Q6600 turned in a score of 231, pretty average for this processor. So let's jump into the BIOS and increase the multiplier to see if we can extract some extra performance. Unfortunately, the maximum speed I managed to get stable on this processor was only 2.88 GHz, but let's run Cinebench again and see how it fares this time around. As you can see, the Q6600 came in with a score of 275 this time, and the maximum temperature only hit 54 Celsius, so let's move on to the graphics card. The Radeon HD 7770 was also not a particularly good overclocker either but I managed a stable 1150MHz on the core and 1300MHz on the memory, so let's jump into some games. I will be recording from my screen as Radeon Relive gave me some unusable footage. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus was run at 720p low settings and I'd hoped for a better showing considering this title has Vulkan support. Here you can see the Q6600 is pegged at 100% most of the time, although the HD7770 was being utilised pretty heavily at 80-90% to as well. The performance, quite frankly, was terrible, returning an average of 22 FPS, 1% lows of 13.8 and 0.1% lows of just 8 FPS. Don't play Wolfenstein 2 on this setup or you'll be disappointed. I knew that a 10 year old processor coupled with a 1GB video card to run PUBG was a big ask, but I ran the benchmark anyway. To get the best performance I settled on 1080p very low settings with the scaling set to 70%. Even here the CPU is pegged at between 90-100% to and our graphics card is just idling around 30-40% to usage. This experience was definitely not playable with an average of 32.1 FPS, 1% lows coming in at 16 FPS and the 0.1% lows delivering 10.8 FPS. Let's move on. Shadow of War up next and this was actually a better experience than I had anticipated. Still not great by any stretch of the imagination but definitely less stutter than the other two games tested. The culprit once again being the Q6600 which as you can see was bottlenecking the HD7770. At 720p lowest graphical preset, the system returned an average of 25 FPS, 1% lows of 16.6 and 0.1% lows of 13 FPS. Given our poor performance thus far, I decided to run an older title, The Witcher 3, to see if this was able to handle this title a little better. Here we ran at 1080p low graphics with low post-processing, but unfortunately this was also an unplayable experience with some very obvious stuttering, especially when riding on horseback. Here the average came in at 33 FPS with the 1% lows dropping to 20 and the 0.1% lows dropping in at only 6 FPS. Finally I gave this system a chance to redeem itself with Fortnite as I know this tends to be kinder to older tech. So I set it to medium quality 720p and here are the results. It was so infuriating playing this game with the Q6600 and HD 7770 as we managed pretty decent gameplay when running around, however when the action intensified it was back to slideshow central, making this unplayable for those of you looking to play this title competitively. The average clocked in at 49 FPS, 1% lows hit 24.7 and the 0.1% lows came in at 13.5 FPS. So that's it, the system was a complete bust then. Well, not exactly. Keep watching. After lowering my expectations, I decided to see what it could run rather than what it couldn't. So I fired up CSGO at 1080p medium settings, and this was a far more enjoyable experience. Where old Betsy delivered us an average of 82 FPS, 1% lows of 44, and 0.1% lows of 32 FPS. This was definitely playable, and I probably could have pushed the settings to high settings, as the Radeon 7770 was only hitting 50% usage, maybe in another video. Bioshock Infinite, which was released in March 2013, was up next, and this was run at 1080p high settings, and was another title which ran smooth and looked great at these settings. Here the aging system managed an average of 57.6 FPS, 1% lows of 42, and 0.1% lows of 28 FPS. That's a bit more like it. 
Given the unplayable experience on Shadow of War, I decided to roll back to its predecessor, Shadow of Mordor, and was greeted with a decidedly smoother experience. This was run at 1080p low settings, with FXAA anti-aliasing, and in this environment the system gave credible results, dropping in an average of 48 FPS, 1% lows of 32, with the 0.1% lows following closely at 27 FPS. Rise of the Tomb Raider originally gave a very sketchy experience on DX11, but upon changing to DX12 the difference was night and day, funneling the load back to the Radeon 7770 and letting the Q6600 breathe a little easier. I ended up playing this title for far longer than I was supposed to, that's how enjoyable it was. This was run at 900p on the low preset and FXAA anti-aliasing, where old Betsy spat out an average of 38 FPS, 1% lows of 28.3 and 0.1% lows of 24.6 FPS. As I felt we were nearing the limit of our system's capabilities, I decided to try out Fallout 4, also on 900p low settings, and for most of the part this was playable, although it was right on the cusp I wouldn't push this system any harder. Anyway, here old Betsy scraped in an average of 50 FPS, 1% lows of 30, and 0.1% lows came in at 23 FPS. Not a bad showing, old girl. So there you have it, guys. Given my time again, I probably wouldn't choose the Q6600 as a decent processor, even in a budget system, as I felt it was definitely holding back the performance of the HD7770. But, yeah, if you wish to see that in a future video, be sure to let me know in the comments section below where I'll be able to review it with a more powerful processor. So thanks ever so much for watching today. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing where I'll be doing more benchmarks like this. Stay passionate about PC, whatever your budget, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.